Nations ride, join the triumphant of the sky. I know. I, I'm in voice today. I don't You're think in I, voice today? I don't think I need my alcohol. I don't think I need to gargle today. I know, you even brought out the frankincense and myrrh. I know, I brought it all in there, folks. There's the whole works frankincense. Yeah, look at this, I love this. Yeah, I know. Look at that. The gift of kings. That's my, that's my stuff, yeah. Okay, if, let's put it this way, I have a lot of Jews in my family. So we appreciate that one, folks. So actually we got that, we got that for a bunch of nice Jewish people that happen to like it, so. so I know. A gifting suite? Well, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go. Okay, uh, okay, this is day three of our um, the so this history. Is day four, isn't it? No, it's day three. Oh, is it? Okay. It, it, day it? three, it's day three. I know, but we're gonna we'll get this. It's just a oh, bit. that's right, it is day three. It's day uh, three, yeah, day four comes tomorrow. That's because we're doing more than one song each okay, day. Okay, if you see us, we're doing two things at a time because we're elsewhere when you're actually seeing this thing go up, so. No, it's because each day we've done three at a time, and yeah. I was like splitting them up. Okay. Yeah, but um, today we're going to do Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Oh, introduce yourself. Oh, this is old Pam. <laughs> I'm just in a hurry to do it because I don't want my voice to go out the window. And this is not a spring check, and today what we're doing is we're talking about all the, the history behind all of this Christmas music, or what you believe to be Christmas music. Which, in many cases, not traditional music. It's church hymns, or things for Thanksgiving, or for other holidays, or even for, um, um, you know, like, uh, uh, for instance, Gilbert or Sullivan, or somebody that wrote, like, the Beggar's Opera, for instance. They're not, they really have little relationship to the holiday, but they've been sort of grabbed and lyrics changed. But today we get Hark the Herald Angels Sing. This is the third time I've done this one. It appeared in uh, first period in 1739 in the collective hymns of scarce poems. Or written, sacred poems. Yes, sacred poems. Yes. Written by Charles Wesley. This is not the widely known version uh, today. It's called a, som a somber man. Wesley had requested to receive slow and solemn music for his lyrics, not the joyful tune we now expect. What's more, uh, Wesley's original opening couplet is Hark, how all the Welkin rings. See, they, they really changed. Hark, it. how all the welkin rings. Yeah, versus Hark, the Herald Glory Angels. Glory to the King what of Kings. What in the world is a welkin? Uh, it's just basically another another idiom. So I may have really had to figure that out. So the popular version, a result of um, <laughs> alterations by various hands, notably George Whitfield, Wesley's co-worker, who changed the opening couple to the familiar one. Actually, anybody that ever knows anything about um, John Philip Sousa, he wrote love songs, and his wife turned him in. Da, 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 he wrote, da, 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 he wrote da, da, love songs and she changed them into marches. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah, his wife would change it into a march. So, um, okay. And he also, I think it's really uh, kind of funny. He that, probably did the love songs for her. Yeah. and then she, <laughs> Irving Berlin's Easter morning used to be a, a, a rutabaga a day. So, they, they did, that did not, that was somebody who was not really going well that morning. Okay. But, and also Felix Mendelssohn, whose name... He comes also, up repeatedly when we're talking about Christmas music. Yeah, because he, he basically he changed a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, Mendelssohn composed a, cana, a, a cantata to commemorate Johann Gutenberg's invention of the printing press and its music from this cantata adapted by the English musician William H. Cummings to fit the lyrics of Hark the Herald Angels Sing that propels the carol we know today. Um, oh, and in 1855, English musician William H. Cummings yeah, the one we just talked about, adapted Felix Mendelssohn's secular music from Fest Gesang to fit the lyrics of Hark the Herald Angels Sing, written by Charles Wesley. He, Wesley envisioned the song being sung to the same tune as the song Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Actually, it kind of is. Okay. Today, and it's something Christ else. the Lord has the risen today. today. Which is like Hark the Herald Angels Sing, right? Yeah. As far as um, structure. So, and in some hymnals, is included along with the more popular version. Boy, this oh, is, now this I want to see. This is really big. This is regarded as uh, one of the great four uh, Anglican hymns ever done. So. Wow, in the church hymn book. Wow. Yeah, basically. basically that, that's why everybody wanted to get their hands on it and do their own version to popularize it and have their name all over it, right? Yeah, but an un, uh, uncommon arrangement of the hymn to the tune, See the Conquering Hero, comes from Judas... Uh, Actually, it's to say it's Handel. Handel. It's Handel. It's easier to say Handel. That I can't, you know. Machabees. Yeah. Machabees. 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 Yeah, but they just say Handel. 
normally associated with a hymn, Thine Be the Glory is traditionally used as the recessional hymn of the Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols from St. Patrick's Cathedral of Dublin. Ah, oh, this is a, they changed it a little bit for the Irish. Um, the unusual three verses are divided into six verses each with chorus. The arrangement features a, a brass fanfare with drum. Okay, that makes sense because Handel's Messiah basically is lots of mm -hmm. fanfare. So, uh, but then we got uh, we actually I put the song at the beginning this time. So. You did? Oh yeah. So here's here's the lyrics. At least some of the lyrics to the American side. Which is this? If, is this the same one that most people are familiar with? Yeah. This is the this is the modern version where it goes. Hark the herald angels sing, um, glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy my own, God and sinners reconcile, joy for all ye nations rise, join the triumphant of the skies. See, that's a little bit of that one. No, we get to go to. See, his intonation is a little bit different than mine. I, I know. My problem comes is we get into things I actually don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, I, don't I remember rem from church. I don't remember. I'm, okay, I I'm, I'm, okay. The problem is she's a good little Catholic girl. I was a, I'm a Lutheran and Jew. We don't play that sort of music. So. <laughs> this is the one that I'm not certain about. Good King Wenceslas. I could go get the, the piano. Is a popular Christmas carol that tells the story of Good King Wenceslas braving harsh winter weather to give alms to a poor peasant on I'd the face of the demon on the second day of Christmas. During the journey, his page is about to give up a struggle with the cold weather, but is enabled to continue by following the king's footprints step by step through the deep snow. The legend is based on the historical Saint Wenceslas, I Duke of Bohemia. The Czech form of the name is uh, Slavoj Valov. Basically, in 1853, the English hymn writer John Mason Neal wrote Wenceslas lyrics in collaboration with music director Thomas Hillmore, and a carol first appeared in carols uh, in 1853. The Neal's lyrics were set to a tune based upon a 13th uh, century spring carol, Tempest Adas Forum. The time was near for flowering, first published in 1582. <laughs> yeah, that's all. I think that's definitely in public domain. Wenceslas was considered a martyr and a saint immediately after his death when the cult of Wenceslas grew up in Bohemia and in England. Um, referring to, uh, according to the hieroglyphics, the Chronicle of Cosmos of Plog, writing in the year, it states, By his deeds, I think you know better than I can tell you, for his, his red and his passion, no one doubts that rising every night from his noble bed with bare feet and only a chamber, then he went to do God's work. So. Um, Basically, uh, this one uh, basically uh, is just giving you the garbage of what we're saying. Uh, text beginning, we got, but we're trying to get down to, but, but I mean, it's really long, it's been you know, about a dozen different languages and a number of different things. Okay. Um, Neil's Carol. That's basically. because it's a very old song. It's a very old song. A lot of people have like, redid it over We're years. talking going back like a thousand years almost. So. Uh, the hymn, basically, well, we really go down. Uh, at, 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 okay. Um, Demics tend to be critical of the... Oh, now they're talking about all the changes that people yeah. do and all the people that are criticizing oh, the know. changes that they did. Okay. My gosh. Basically, uh, Elizabeth Poston in the Penguin Book of Christmas Carol referred to it as a product of an unnatural marriage between Victorian whimsy and a 13th century dance carol. She goes on to explain how it's the, the ponderous moral dogma is not fit in a light-handed dance measure of the original tune. It's performed in the correct manner. Sounds ridiculous. Basically, he don't like good King West. It's a joke song, folks. Uh, you know something like. I mean, I'm looking at the words that she's using, like ponderous and doggerel. It, it goes and like the good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stefan when the snow laid round about. Deep and crisp that even brightly shone the moon that night. Through the frost was cruel when a poor man came in sight gathering winter fuel. Heather Page and stand by me if you know us telling. Yonder present who is he? Where and what is his dwelling? So he lives in a good league hence underneath the mountain right against the forest fence. Mm -hmm. So that's basically good King Wenceslas. You know, that it's basically I can 
it basically the lyrics. That really, song got everybody also worked up. Got everybody pissed off about that what song. Is that? You know, basically, really didn't like. Okay, it was. It's basically. It, it should have been. Uh, we'll go back. Uh, actually, I'll go up a bit. It probably. Uh, I mean, this one out of all the Christmas music. It probably that we've should done. have been. How the good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stefan when the snow laid round about. Yeah, okay, that, that, that's why she, she's sitting there saying it's a product of what was it? Go, go back up this way. Unnatural marriage between Victorian whimsy. It's a fun song. And a 13th century dance carol. Yeah, it's supposed to be fun, and people basically screwed. Got, it. They got too serious with it. I, I know it. What happens every now and then? But now the next one, though, oh, is something one. that is actually is much more of a religious song and know, more we serious. We three kings. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. So ooh, there you can go. I know. You go. I like that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> if you be careful, it also gets a few other Christmas songs with that thing. There you go. Okay. Um, it's also known as the We, we Three Kings of Orientar, which is like the beginning of the song, We Three Kings of Orientar. <laughs> Actually, that's how I knew it when I was a little kid because the We Three Kings was a hybridization they used today, I think so. Or the Quest of the Magi. Yeah. It's a Christmas carol written by the Reverend John Henry. <laughs>